Hi, this is Carrie Cooper for Guitar Center's Focus on Rock. Now, there are many outstanding keyboard players in the world of rock. John Lord from Deep Purple, Rick Wright of Pink Floyd, Ray Manzarek of The Doors. But perhaps the most influential and eccentric of them all would have to be the late Keith Emerson. Widely regarded as the most prolific rock keys player of all time, Emerson was a Moog pioneer and brought keyboards to the front as a lead instrument in a way that no other had or has since. He was also responsible for some of the most jaw-dropping, unthinkable instrument stunts in rock music history. So before we get to the cannons and the upside down spinning pianos and on stage knife throwing, Keith Emerson was a young lad brought up in Yorkshire, England. Never having received formal piano lessons, he describes his musical education to have been taught to him by a group of little old ladies. As a kid, he listened to jazz and boogie-woogie, country-style pianists and classical too. He was said to be a very serious child. He'd walk around with Beethoven sonatas under his arm. He also said that he was good at avoiding being beaten up by the bullies due to his ability to play Jerry Lee Lewis and Little Richard songs, thereby being deemed cool enough to be left alone. Prior to forming Emerson, Lake and Palmer, Keith played with The Nice, where his penchant for musical eccentricity came to the fore. His keyboard of choice at the time was the L100 Hammond organ, and was keen on turning it on its back, riding it like a horse, sticking swords into the keys, and generally beating the thing up. Far from solely being acts of showmanship though, many of these actions produced effects that wouldn't ordinarily be made by the instrument. The blades created sustained notes, turning it upside down created a feedback effect. His first show at the 1970 Isle of Wight Festival with Emerson, Lake and Palmer would feature firing cannons and violent onstage instrument destruction, much to the bewilderment of the half a million strong crowd. For many a synth enthusiast, Keith Emerson is synonymous with the Moog family. He first heard the Moog synthesizer when a record shop owner played him Switched on Bach by American electronic musician and composer Wendy Carlos. Instantly falling in love with the sound, he quickly borrowed Manfred Mann's Mike Vickers Moog for an upcoming show and would be hooked for the rest of his career. So dedicated and addicted to the line was he, he reached out to Bob Moog himself and acquired one of the first Moog modular synthesizers which was built for the Museum of Modern Arts Jazz in the Garden Public Performance. From then on, the names Emerson and Moog were entwined. He was the first ever artist to fully take a modular synthesizer on the road and his so-called Monster Moog weighed a staggering 550 pounds standing 10 feet tall and took no less than four roadies to move. Emerson hated the idea of being static when playing the piano and so would do anything he could to create variety and innovation when playing, choosing instead to pluck the piano strings and strum them as if he was playing a harp, always wanting to get further inside the instrument. Perhaps his most memorable stunt of all was that of the flying piano, a stunt he picked up from an old circus professional from Long Island. The piano was suspended 20 feet in the air and rotated end over end while Keith played above. The mystery surrounding how he pulled off that trick would come up in interviews again and again. In his own words, after that, every TV show I did came the question, Keith, how do you spin around on that piano? I'd say, what about my music? When I had the honor of meeting the great jazz pianist Dave Brubeck, just before he died, he said, Keith, you've got to tell me, how do you spin around on that piano? Dave Brubeck was 90 years old then, and I said, Dave, don't try it. This is Carrie Cooper for Guitar Center's Focus on Rock. You can shop for the greatest selection of music gear on earth in store or at guitarcenter.com.